the Ipsum electorate from Rimiwira's posh northern slopes to the historic village of Parnell. It's as blue as they come. National won almost two-thirds of the party vote there in 2008 and for the last six years has been a convenient home for National's centre-right partner, ACT. Centre-right. But ACT have had a few bad years and some people in Epsom are saying it might be strategic. A vote for ACT is getting hard to justify at the moment. In a moment, the three highest polling candidates in their first election debate. National's Paul Goldsmith, ex John Banks and Labor's David Parker, a former cabinet minister, who's arrived to put a cat amongst the pigeons. But first, Damien Christie with a look at Epsom. <laughs> Welcome to Epsom, home to champagne wishes and caviar dreams. With the average house here costing more than a million dollars, it's no surprise Epsom is as true blue as they come. When the electorate was first carved out in 1996, it delivered a 19,000 vote majority to National MP Chris Fletcher. But these days, MMP has brought different demands on the people of Epsom. I think when you look at the last two elections where the people of Epsom have been charged with uh, the responsibility of determining whether they want a, a centre-right government or a centre-left government, and they've done, um, because they're intelligent people and they're, they're politically astute and smart, they've done the right thing. This year, the plan is no different for Epsom, and the signs say it all. No mention of national candidate Paul Goldsmith here while Ant could barely be any smaller on the John Banks hoarding. And when you ask the Prime Minister what voters should do, you get this. Epsom is a place where National enjoys strong support, and we hope that continues. Our primary aim is for the party vote. Even for political doublespeak, the inference is clear, so why isn't it working? Colin Craig, who organised Auckland's March for Democracy, polled Epsom for a number of months while deciding whether to stand there for his new Conservative Party. What we found consistently uh, National Party candidate was going to win. That was consistent across the polling that we did. And the other thing we found was that as time went by, ACT were losing ground, we were gaining ground. Craig's polling supports what the Herald found last weekend, a 14-point lead for Goldsmith over Banks. So why aren't Epsom voters listening to the Prime Minister's secret message? Epsom voters are actually relatively intelligent voters. And I'm not sure they enjoy being taken for granted. Tens of billions of dollars worth of value can be created out of doing that. Epsom's Green candidate David Hay has been campaigning in the electorate and he agrees. I've had people ring me up and come up to me in the street. I've, I've heard rumours that there's a uh, group organising a right-wing voting block against the ACT Party. Uh, they're really upset, you know, they, they, they just feel like they're being taken for granted, that their, their votes are not being valued. Epsom is one of the most highly educated electorates in New Zealand and they understand what's happening with uh, the current situation with ACT and National. This is a form of gerrymandering. People don't like it. And they can see right through that strategy. Epsom voters are intelligent and educated. It's a line you keep hearing. And statistically speaking, it's correct. You're more likely to bump into a university graduate here than anywhere outside of Wellington Central. So what do the voters say? I don't really approve of all the machinations that's going on and I think it's just smacks of jobs for the boys kind of thing. Do you know who your candidates are? John Banks. And? That's about all I'm interested in actually is what John's up to. Paul Goldsmith, uh, he'll, either way he's coming into Parliament by the looks of it. Uh, can't say no Paul to be honest. What do you know about Paul Goldsmith? Nothing. Mm. You know he's John Banks' biographer? No, I don't. Being told that the people of Epsom are very smart and they understand that both candidates will get in anyway. That's, that's true, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have to try and get the ACT candidate in, actually. <laughs> I think that the ACT candidate that has been selected for Epsom is an outstanding candidate. If anyone knows Epsom voters, it's Christine Fletcher. No one's ever come close to that 19,000 majority she secured in 1996. It's misunderstood by some of the rest of the country. Uh, people are carrying enormous mortgages. Uh, they're making huge sacrifices, holding down several jobs to pay those school fees and to live in grammar zone. And um, they need to know that they have someone who will represent them and their issues. But unfortunately, I think for John, he has aligned himself with Don Brashen. Don's day's been.
If the polls are anything to go by, Fletcher's right. But also significant is the large number of undecided voters, over 40% in that last poll. People are not focused on the election at the moment. When the World Cup finishes, um, which we hope will be uh, on Sunday week, uh, then people will start to focus on politics. There's a lot still to come here, uh, and I wouldn't put it past the ACT Party to make another blunder either. The people of Epsom are smart and they know what they want and that's certainly the message I'm hearing this time. They won't be told what to do. After the break, Act John Banks, Nationals Paul Goldsman, <coughs> Labour's David Parker, do battle for the seat of Epsom.